we are going to be talking about uh, animated terrain now. And the secret to making animated terrain is simply loading uh, several different related images for a tile and putting them in an array. And then every once in a while, every so often, every so many frames, we're going to just switch which picture we're using. And the reason we're going to use an array for this is because to switch which picture we're using is just a matter of changing a number. It's going to be a lot like Scratch. You guys remember Scratch back in the day? That was good times if you took information technology. If you did, that's okay. But in Scratch, uh, every sprite had a list of costumes as well as a costume number. And you could change that costume number to change what picture was attached to the sprite. And then if you got to the end of the list, it would just wrap back around to the beginning again. So this is going to be the exact same concept, but we have to build our own costume list. That's what's different about it in processing. So we're going to build our own costume list, and it's actually really easy to do. And it gives us a lot of flexibility as well. In the past, in Scratch, you just have that one costume list, and it could get really annoying if you had a lot of costumes to manage. So we can build multiple costume lists. We're not going to do that in this particular instance. Later when we animate characters, that's what we'll do. Right now, we're just going to... Whoops, <laughs> it looks like Eric's having some trouble there. Uh, but uh, for now, we're just going to have one array that contains the costumes, and we'll go from there. So I'll show you what these costumes are. I'm going to go to my folder. And you can get these pictures from the handout folder. Uh, I have water 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I have a, something called water.png that I'm not using as well. That's for like the water that's, that's not animated. Um, but you can, you can get these pictures from the handout folder, and I think that'll be fantastic. So don't get it right now, because you won't be paying attention if you go and are searching through folders. You can come back to that, and you can get that later on. That will not be the problem you uh, struggle with today, I assure you. So what we're going to do is we're going to load all those different water pictures into an array. And then when we're going to change our map. And I'll show you what my map looks like. And you can sort of emulate that to, to have sort of a layer that's going to be animated water and a layer that's non-animated water, the deeper water. And then I'll show you how you can do the animation itself. So first of all, here's me loading my pictures. And I'll zoom in. I realize when I program on my own, I make my, screw, my text size normal. But now it is insufficient for demonstration purposes. So that's a lot better. OK, here we are. So this is something in my first tab where I have all my variables. You have the same section. And I just made a new little chunk of that space called animated terrain. We're going to have two new variables. So check it out. I have an array, which has been a while since you've done an array, possibly. Not since last year. We did a lot of array list stuff this year, but not arrays. So we'll talk a bit about that. And we also have an int called costume num, which is a shout out to Scratch, where we used to have that exact same variable, a costume number. Uh, don't worry if you never use Scratch. This just, keep, just keeps track of which picture we are showing or attaching to our Fbox. So as you type this down, I'll just mention that WaterPix is an array of P images. And it contains four P images. If you wanted to animate something with more or less costumes, or uh, pictures, I should say. I keep using scratch words. Uh, I'll try not to be too scratch biased. Uh, if you wanted to have more or less, then you can change the number of them here. So here's a quick skill testing question. If you make an array called water picks, and it has four elements in it, it's four places to store P images, what are, what are the indexes? What, what does that index refer to? Like if I said water picks sub zero, or water picks sub three, what, what am I talking about there? What is that referring to? What does the index tell us? Which one it is. Thanks, Ricky. Yeah, it tells us which picture. We've made a variable called water picks that's going to store all of our pictures. So we use the index to decide which of our pictures we're looking at. And that's what costume number is going to be. It's going to keep track of what is the current picture that our surface of our water is using. So it's going to start at zero. Hey, why does it start at zero? I know you guys know this, but I want to say it 
to get you guys back into it since it's January 3rd today. Exactly. Index starts at zero. That means if costume number is zero, that means that our, we're looking at our first picture. Eventually, what we're going to do is we're going to change costume number to one. And then we're going to change it to two. And then we're going to change it to three. And then what are we going to do? Are we going to change it to four? We can't change it to four. Why? Because that would be out of bounds. If we said that there are four pictures. They're numbered zero, one, two, and three. That's four different pictures, right? If we go to four, we'll get index out of bounds. So when we want to go to four, what we have to do is reset it back to zero. Yeah, so that's what we're, we're going to write a short algorithm that will take care of our changing costume number from zero, one, two, to three, and then back to zero again. I bet you guys could probably do that with a little bit of time, but I'll, I'll just kind of demonstrate what's going on there. So that's me getting my pictures ready. How do you load the pictures? It's a little bit different than loading pictures normally, but it's not a lot different. And you've seen the syntax before. Hey, here's me. Look at me. I'm, wa I'm loading it. I'm loading water pick sub zero. That's index zero. And I load water one. I guess I could have named that a little bit better. I think I probably should name that water zero to keep it all uh, consistent. But you guys can name it better. Uh, water sub one. That's the next picture. I just load all the pictures individually. Just like that. Now, this array stuff, is this looking familiar? Is this uh, reasonable for everybody? We haven't done it for a while, but yeah, you guys are okay with it? Awesome. So this is sort of the next step. We want to just load our pictures. You're going to have to get these pictures, of course. They're not necessarily in your folder right now, but again, they're in the handout folder for you to grab. So we're just loading the pictures one by one. And once that's done, then you actually have to make a space for you to have water in your map. Now, you guys could just copy one of these things down. I'm sure that you could extrapolate from there and take a look at that. So I'm going to go on to show you what my map looks like. So here's my map. I, can't, I guess I can zoom in a little bit more if I use the Windows zoom function. Uh, here's my water. Notice that my water is made up of two different colors. I have a light blue surface and a dark blue um, deep part of the water. There are actually two different kinds of F boxes. One's going to be animated and one's going to be just regular water. They're both going to count as water for the purposes of slowing down my character and such, but I don't want all of my water to look like the surface of water being animated because that would look really dumb. I've done it, I know. I've done it by accident. It's really bad. Uh, so. I've just to solve that problem I've just made sort of a, a two separate colors to code in two different kinds of F boxes. Uh, to be honest, it's not necessary and if you wanted a uh, interesting programming challenge, you could make it so that you only have one level of one type of color and the program decides which one should be animated. But there's no need to do that necessarily. So just if you're looking for a challenge. So that's how I've changed my map. And of course if I change my map which tab has to change in order to make that mean something? Physica Platformer 2, your main tab? I don't know what yours is called. Uh, load World, Update Enemies, Update Player, or Update Terrain. Which of those... Uh, my, my mouse stopped working. Which one, of these function, uh, so which one of these tabs needs to change in order to actually load a new, des newly designed world? What's it going to be? Load world. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you guys know the answers. You're just tired, having trouble putting putting words into the air. That's right. Load world has to change. Load world is what looks at each individual pixel in the picture, looks at the color, and makes a decision on what kind of F box to load in. So you guys will be able to do this without too much difficulty if you have forgotten a little bit because it's been you know since. Um, uh, December, I forget what the last day was, like 18th or something, then just take a look at how you're doing other F-box loading. But I'll show you what mine looks like. Here it is. Hey, look, I have a uh, deep blue is the name of my color for the underwater, and then blue is the name for the water surface. So I just have two if statements. So how does this deep blue water and blue water differ? There's, there's not a lot of difference. We're really just making another F-box. The only thing that's different that we're really doing is we're setting their names slightly different. I have one called water. That's the deep water is called water for me. The water surface is called, you guessed it, 
water surface. I know. Riveting. Isn't this amazing? Aren't you so glad you got up early in the morning so I can tell you these obvious things? But it is important. How come setting the name is important? It's, it's important because it matters. And it matters because it's important. That's right. No, it's, it's important because this is how our code is going to distinguish which of these blocks needs to be animated. So I do need to call them different things. I can't just call them uh, all water. Because I only want to animate certain things. And when I, I only want to animate the water surface in particular. So when I'm writing that loop that's going to go through all of my F boxes, I want to make sure that I can find the ones that are the surface so I can animate those in particular. So what's exciting about these? I guess one thing to mention is uh, the set sensor is set to true. That's what allows you to pass through the water. And also, I'm doing a lot of little annoying work with uh, opacities. And I, I guess I can't quite tell you how to do that 100% yet, because I had to just type in random numbers until I got it correct. There's some kind of inconsistency in the way opacity works for strokes and fills. And I cannot for the life of me figure it out, except until I type random numbers and get, get the number that matches. But notice that I'm using set fill uh, for water, and I gave it a fourth parameter. This is red, green, blue, and the last one is alpha, a number between 0 and 255, and that allows it to be transparent. And that's why uh, when I'm inside of the water, oops, that's Photoshop, <laughs> there we go. That's why I'm inside the water, I, keep, I turn blue and I look like I'm underwater, it's because those blocks have transparency. So that's something to keep in mind uh, for you guys as you go forward. So you can set fill and stroke. There's also the possibility of doing that for the images themselves. But to be honest, what I did was I just made my pictures uh, somewhat transparent in Photoshop and loaded those as well. So that's another way to do it. If you don't want to mess around with the numbers, just open up Photoshop and give your uh, images, those, those water one, two, three, four uh, pictures, some transparency. And then you can load them and they'll be transparent as well. So there you go. I'm just kind of adding in these, these images. What image did I attach to the surface? I just attached the first one. Water pick sub zero. Thanks for your question. I, I'm not going to scroll. I guess I'll scroll up, but I do want to just make sure that I'm clear that these are not that different from the other things you've done. So, oh, I'm not sure what you mean. I, I, this isn't really what we're talking about, so we'll, we'll talk about that at some other point if you're interested in seeing other things that are not related to this. Okay, so there we go. So we have our two distinct types of F boxes. We have the water surface, and we have our just regular uh, water. And the important thing is, right now, we've named them differently, and we're using set sensor true to make sure we can pass through these things. Since water, generally, unless it's frozen, you can just pass through and, and swim inside. So that's good. The last thing, of course, is going to be actually animating these blocks. So right now, if I was just to run this code, uh, we would have some tiles that we could interact with and, and pass through, but there would be no animation. They'd be stuck uh, on, I guess, the first picture. So the question is, how do we get it to change pictures uh, a after a few frames have passed, or after a few moments have passed? Then go to the next picture, the next picture, and so on. So that's going to be our challenge. How is it that we can attach a new image later on? So which one of these tabs do you think is going to do that? Are we going to do it in the main tab? Are we going to do it in the load world? Or, I mean, I think it's, I guess you could do it in update player or update terrain. Which of the ones of these does it sound like you do? Update terrain, yeah. Update terrain is our function and our tab for doing all the things where our terrain makes some kind of change or decision uh, in the course of the game running. You wouldn't do it in load world because load world happens before the project runs. So animation can't be done in load world. Does that make sense? You're just setting up animation in, in the load world function. You're just giving properties to the F boxes. But animation itself cannot happen here. Uh, you might think, well, can I do it in the main tab? But what the main tab is mostly for is collision stuff. We're mostly using the main tab to do collision stuff, and I guess 
keyboard input stuff. So you don't need to collide with water for it to animate. It's going to be animating all the time. Oh, that would be cool, though, to have some kind of splash effect. But uh, that's not what we're doing right now. So it's not going to be in the main tab. It's going to be an update terrain. Update terrain is the function that we wrote that is going to be doing all the things that we need to do for uh, changing the terrain as the game progresses. So, for example, uh, what did we do before? Hey, we have the bridges falling, for example. So this is where we have our, our if, uh, if the name of our box is set to fall, we set static to false. So this is pretty sparse right now for most of you. Many of you do not have a lot of code in here. I'm just going to get, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. Don't ha we don't have a lot of code that's going on inside of this function yet. I I'm going to be putting a lot more things in it. But I'll just show you what most of yours looks like. It probably looks mostly like uh, this to people. This is what your function looks like. It's a loop that's going to go through all of your terrain F boxes. It's going to get a box and just it's going to give it a generic name B because it could be anything. Right? It could be a ground, it could be a water, it could be all sorts of things. And then there's just a whole bunch of if statements. Right now you have one, but we're going to have a whole bunch of if statements that will ask, hey, is this a falling block? Is this a water block? Is this a lava block? Is this a whatever block? And then it will do whatever it needs to do in order to uh, facilitate that block's functions. So right now we're going to make an animated water surface, so we're just going to add in another if statement after this one. And you can add in lots of if statements here to coordinate and control your terrain. The last thing down here is the I++. I++ just moves on to the next block. It's, it's just going through all the different blocks of terrain, and I++ just moves us to the next one. So there's our if statement for dealing with our falling bridge. So let's make another if statement uh, dealing with a water surface. So you can say something like, hey, if uh, b.getName dot equals, uh, mine's called water surface. Then you can do something with that. And later on, we're going to have if B's name is switch, and if B's name is teleporter, and if B's name is other things, uh, so that they can be coordinated as well. All right. So what is it that we want to do with this? We want to animate it, right? When we're animating, what we're really doing is just attaching a new image. That's the main thing. We're just attaching a new image. So I would just say something like b.attach image. And then you just have to pick the right image from inside of the, uh, inside of the array of pictures. So I'm going to put in water picks, I think is what I called it, sub costume num. So this is me attaching the current picture that we've selected. So we're not saying water picks index 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, we're saying costume num. So why costume num? That keeps track of which costume we're currently, uh, we're currently on. And now all we have to do is write a little bit of code that changes costume num from 1 to 2, or sorry, from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, and then back to 0 again. Let's do that over and over and over again. So I bet you guys could do that. I bet you could do that. However, where do we do that? That's a bit of a problem. Would you do it here? Like I did the first time I demonstrated this uh, last year. <laughs> and you might not know. Like, Is this a good place? Would I say something like costume num plus plus or something like that? I mean, you have to do some code to make it go on. Yeah, yeah. I see some people shaking their heads. You can't do it here. The reason why you can't do it here because this is in a loop that's looking at all the different terrains. So every time we find a water surface, it would increment costume number by one. And that wouldn't make much sense, right? We want to we make them all move forward at the same time. We want to switch the costume number and then draw the new animations. 
and pick the new picture, and then switch the caution number, and then do all of the water surfaces together. If we do it in this loop, then every time we find a new water surface, we'll do a new attaching of the costume. So instead of doing it here, what we can do is we can do it outside of this loop. And I'm tempted to hide my code here. <laughs> I'll just delete it really fast. Bam. Whoops, no one saw anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that code at the beginning of update terrain. What we're going to do is advance costume number. If it goes above three, we're going to set it back to zero. So you guys go ahead and do that right now. I bet you could do it. This is a good exercise. YouTube will have to wait. <laughs> I'm tempted to stop the video, but I know my editing skills are so poor that I won't be. So everyone on YouTube, you can just fast forward a little bit. Uh, but we're going to let you guys, give you guys a minute just to write that code. What we want to do is we want to increase costume number by one. And if it goes above three, set it back to zero again. Go for it. Do it. You can do it. Uh, the clacking of keys is beautiful. That sound. I haven't heard it for so long. All right, I bet it's done. Or if it's not, you probably are looking for a little guidance because you maybe you've forgotten everything about processing in the last two weeks of snow and video games. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say costume num. I'll use plus plus. You guys are familiar with that. You can use costume num equals costume num plus one if you want. That's fine. But this just means we're going to increase it by one. And if costume num is greater than three, we could say. Technically, the best way of saying this would be water picks uh, I forget if it's a capital P or not. Hold on. It's not a capital P. Waterpicks dot length would be the best way of saying this. If you're looking for the most superior code that you can write. The reason is because if we eventually later on changed how many pictures were in there, then this code would automatically update. But we're not going to change that because I'm not going to draw any more costumes, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, if it's greater than three, then we set it back to zero again. Equals zero. Now I got to fix, I think I put water picks with a capital P down here. So I'm just going to make that change really quick. And let's see what that looks like. I'm going to run it and we'll find out what our water looks like. So we're going to jump in and wow, look at it shimmer. It is so shiny and glimmery and, and glittery, but that's going to cause seizures in people. Like, is this going too fast? How fast is it going by the way? Can you guess how many... Uh, pictures it's going to show you in 60 seconds 60 of them because our frame rate right our frame rate in processing assuming we're not dropping any frames is 60 frames per second so it's going to do this every frame right update train happens every frame so we're going to increase to one eventually go back to zero and so on and we're going to be attaching that image every time so how can we slow it down does anybody remember from last year how we can take a look at the frames Frame count, yeah, frame count. So what we can do is we can make an if statement to check the frame count. Uh, you might also remember there's a frame rate as well. Frame rate probably won't work for us here because it'll slow down the entire game. We don't want to slow down the whole game. We just want to slow down our costume changing. So what I'd like to do is I don't want to do this every frame. I just like to do it every, say, 10th frame or 7th frame or 5th frame or something. So the way to do that is to wrap this in an if statement. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the if statement blank for a second, but I'm going to put in my braces, open brace and close brace. So this code here is nestled in a cozy little if statement. Drinking eggnog by the fire or something more tasty than eggnog because that stuff is gross. I don't know about you guys. But <laughs> anyways, here we go. So if, if what? So what we can do is, we can say if it's the fifth frame, I think would be a good call. Only because I've done this before and I know that five is good. So whoops, I don't put an if in my if. I say if uh, frame count. Frame count, notice how it turned pink? That's a built-in variable in processing that keeps track of what frame it is. So I can say, hey, are you a multiple of five or seven or ten or whatever? The way you can check to see if a uh, number is a multiple of another, another number is using the modulus operator. This is something we haven't done for a while. So I'll just give you a refresher. So this looks like percent, doesn't it? 
It looks like percent because it's the percent sign. So of course it looks like percent. But in programming, that's not what percent means. Percent means modulus. I'm going to write a little modulus. 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 There we go. Modulus, or mod as it is usually pronounced, is just division, but instead of taking getting the answer, it gets the remainder. So for example, 4 modulus 2 is 0. Because 4 divided by 2 is 2, no remainder. 0 remainder. So 4 modulus 2 is 0. Uh, but 4 modulus... Uh, let's do a better example. Let's do 10 modulus 3. 1. That's correct. Because 10 divided by 3... Well, 3 uh, goes into 10 3 times, so that's the quotient. And 3 times 3 is 9, so it leaves 1 remainder. So whether or not we remember long division and all the remainder stuff isn't the important thing. The important thing to know is if you use modulus and you get 0, then you know that the number uh, that you modulus by is... Um, is or sorry, the number that you modulus is going to be a... What's the word I'm looking for? A multiple of, of your number. So if I have modulus frame count by 5, and I get 0, I get no remainder, then frame count must be a, a, a multiple of 5. It must be 5, 10, 15, 20, any of those numbers. Because we divide it evenly into that number. So I can just say, hey, does it equal 0? And therefore, this will only happen on the 5th frame, on the 10th frame, on the 15th frame. All the multiples of 5 frames. And on the second and third and fourth frame, it won't happen. So we will slow down our rate of animation. And if I run that, then I will get much slower animation. You can play with different numbers. That's looking pretty smooth, right? If you go too slow, it'll look choppy. If you go too fast, it'll look stupid. So you can just sort of get the right number that you want for your, for your frame count. So you guys have a fair bit of work to do to put that all together. I hope that made sense. You have basically all the update terrain stuff you need. Uh, we're just really attaching the image every, uh, every frame. But we're only updating that image every fifth frame. And then what you guys need to do and make sure you got is the loading the world stuff. So you got to go back and make sure your loading world is correct. You have to make sure your, the map is correct. I don't know where my map is. Uh, here you got to make sure your map is drawn correct. You bring in all those color variables from uh, the from paint and I think that'll be good. So I'm going to save it there and I'll let you guys go ahead and make your own animated terrain and by the end of class try and get it working. We got about 50, 25 minutes or so so that should be enough time, well maybe not enough time, we'll see. Try and get it done by the end of class. Thanks everybody.